Basic lesions correspond to changes in morphology or tissue colour. The primary manifestation of these basic lesions, and certainly one of the most common, is mucosal keratosis. This is characterised by a white coloration of the oral mucosa that is slightly elevated and cannot be detached from the underlying tissue. This keratosis is orthokeratotic or parakeratotic. Keratosis must be distinguished from a pseudomembranous coating. Pseudomembranous coatings are deposited on the mucosa. They can be detached. They are most frequently caused by excessive desquamation or fungal proliferation. Macules. These correspond to a change in the colour of the mucosa without elevation of tissue. They may be of melanic origin, as in the top photo, of hemorrhagic origin, shown on the cheek in the middle photo, or related to exogenous pigmentation caused by the diffusion of metals used in dental treatment, shown here around the tooth. Erythema. This corresponds to vascular proliferation, which produces tissue redness that becomes gradually less pronounced with distance from the zone of inflammation. Erythema must be distinguished from erosions, also red, and characterised by loss of intraepithelial substance. Ulceration corresponds to a loss of deep substance involving the epithelium and the connective tissue. An ulceration is covered with fibrin which gives it a yellowish colour. Fissures These are specific ulcerations which are mainly observed in relation to the lips, principally on the commissures. The fissure often has a yellowish or slightly red colour with a scab that results from the fibrin which has a tendency to dry out. Nodules. These correspond to a full tissue elevation. They are around one centimetre in diameter. They are most commonly associated with underlying benign tumours. Vegetations. These appear as exophytic growths on the mucosa. In most cases, these vegetations are keratinized. Vesicles. Vesicles are fluid-filled tissue elevations. They are small, with a diameter of 1 to 2 millimeters. Bullae. Bullae are fluid-filled tissue elevations. They have a diameter in the region of a centimeter. The bulla may be intraepithelial or subepithelial. Scabs. These correspond to ulcerations which have dried out. They are found outside the oral cavity, mainly on the vermilion border of the lips. Pustules. These are extremely rare lesions characterised by the presence of pus in the mucosa. These pustules impart a slightly yellowish coloration to the mucosa. Depapillation. This corresponds to a loss of lingual papillae. It is mainly observed in association with oligopetialism. Atrophy. In most cases, this lesion is a sequela secondary to an inflammatory response. It is characterised by a reduction in epithelial thickness. Here you can see through to the underlying vascularization of the dorsal surface of the tongue. Scars. In most cases, scars are secondary to a surgical procedure or trauma. This scar was caused by a biopsy performed with a punch.